Ooh, what's going on, people? It's Shamanda YB back once again. So, Mr. Anthony Yardy has announced that he's now a free agent and he's leaving Bricktop. Here we go. Let's watch it. I had to pull over my car for this one. So right now, my previous promotional contracts have expired. My team are doing their job back end to negotiate the best deal for me going forward. Once that's all sorted, me and you can start negotiations for the fight. To put in the fight for the fans and ourselves, because I know we want to fight each other. It's exciting times. Now, off the rip here, I'm kind of cheating here, but essentially, Frank Warren's come out in the last day or however long and refuted these claims. He's saying, we have an active contract with Yard and he is not a free agent. And that's why I always, I guess, I'm not sure how kind of disclosure works, but always lead with the facts, yeah? You don't necessarily have to post the whole contract. Just post, I mean, every contract's gonna have a start and an end date. Just post that, yeah? Hey, my name's Anthony Yard. Because the problem is with this game in particular, there's some sort of laws, I believe, where any other promotion, if a fight is under contract here, you can't even talk to the other person about things. I'm not sure of exactly what thing it is, but there's something in there, I'm sure. You can't mingle. If someone's under a promotional deal and other promoters come mingling, they end up in trouble themselves. So, if Yard's genuinely out of contract, he needs to post up the, the snippet. Hey, Frank, stop lying. Look. January 2017 to January 2024 kind of thing. Or if it's not date based, show us the fights. Hey Frank, I signed this fight, I signed this contract in 2017. It was guaranteed for 10 fights and here's the 10 fights I've had under you kind of thing. Boom. That way it puts it out there. All the promoters then can be serious and reaching out to you. On the other hand of things though, maybe Yard knows this. Maybe Yard knows that he's still under um, contract. And he's using this as leverage. Somewhat naively, potentially. Because really, Frank Frank don't care. If I was to bet right now, why would Frank lie about having an active, active contract? He might do. But Frank's quite... Listen, we know Frank's been suing people. If, Frank, if he was out of contract, then he'd, just, he'd be out of contract. And Frank would have to say, listen, I'm not sure the benefit of Frank lying. Yard has a benefit of lying, potentially, because he thinks he's going to get offers in and he can do something. Or maybe sometimes a promote like Ben Shalom, for example, he may decide it's worth litigating with Frank Warren. If we can sign Anthony Yard, maybe it's worth litigating. But really, the contract's the contract, right? If you've had your 10 fights or you've had the date, I'm not sure. Maybe it's more tricky than that. But if it's simple in my mind, a date-based or a fight-based thing, then it's pretty simple. Have you had the 10 fights or not? Is the date up or not? We don't know at this point. So it's all speculation. Is it the right move for Yard? Frank Warren offered Yard 50-50 split to fight Boazzi. Boazzi signed it. He was happy. Um, Queensbury did a deal with... Well, TNT Sports and Queensbury did a deal with Sky Sports or whatever. I'm not sure what it would have been. Was it a co-promotional thing? Who knows? Who cares? Yard wasn't happy with it. Yard believes he's the A-side. And I think really he's the A-side. In terms of clout. There's no doubt Yard sells more tickets than the Boazzi. Boazzi ain't fought nothing. Now some people have said, well, but Yard's lost a few times and he's washed up. Listen, man. Yard lost in entertaining fights. Yeah, he lost trying to get it. He lost taking risk. Oops. Boazzi, all due respect. Yeah, I rate him for the um, Dan Aziz fight, which I thought he'd lose. But I rate him for that. But outside of that, Yard was out there at a young age, squabbling up with Kovalev in Russia. That gets respect. And Yard didn't go out to Russia and politic. He didn't think, oh, Kovalev been knocking people out. Let me just survive this one. He went in there, saw his opportunity, emptied the tank and got got. Can't argue with that. Oops. <laughs> he left it all out there. What can you say? He then lost to Lyndon Arthur, which was pathetic. It was shocking. But he had a lot going on. His parents were dying or whatever. One of them ones. He then comes back and smokes the boots off of Lyndon Arthur. Something Bivol couldn't do. And then he runs it with Baturbiev. Risk-taking. Entertaining risk-taking, yeah? Every single time. The Baturbiev fight. Big underdog. 4-1, to 5-1 to one underdog. He goes in there, gets beat up a bit, and then comes back hard in the middle of the fight 
and ends up shitting the odds back to 50-50. To go from a 4-1 to one fight, four to one underdog to a, a 50-50 fight against Baturbiev in, in the middle rounds. Fair play to you, man. He went out fighting. He did not quit. The corner threw the towel in or whatever. He weren't looking for a way out, though. I respect that. Multiple times, Yard has travelled the lonely journey to Valhalla. And that, in my mind, in my, the way I do things, that gets respect. But what's he? He ducked Bivog. Oops. A million bucks weren't enough for him. That's corny. Don't quote me on this, but I don't think Yard got much more than a million to fight Kovalev. In fact, I remember him saying, I remember, in fact, Canelo offered him. At the time, Canelo was sniffing about for Kovalev's belt, which he ultimately ended up getting anyway. But that was after Kovalev beat Yard. At that time, Yard was offered, which I do believe was a bit of a play, but well, he played himself to, to some extent. Yard was offered by Canelo, I think a million bucks, just to step aside. So you get paid a million for nothing. But respect to Team Yard, because they said, we don't want no step aside money, we want the belt. We don't want no free money, we want to earn it. And I respect that. Because too many of us, myself at the time, oh well, get the bag, fuck the bag. Have some honour. If you're a young bull, and you think there's some free food on the table, go eat. Yeah? If you think Kovalev's sweet, eat. And that's what he tried to do. I, I salute that. So, Yards showed a career of risk-taking, coming up short. People, some cornball said, oh, he's lost three times. B -b -b Listen, you best believe. If Buatzi had gone there with Bivol and Bater... <laughs> let's not... People, let's call a spade a spade here. Yeah? If Buatzi had been in there with Bater, Biev and Bivol, he'd have lost two times as well. Right? That's the equivalent. At the time, Kovalev was kind of like a bivol cat knocking around, respectively. That makes sense. So, yeah. Who here think Boatsy going to beat Bater uh, Beterbiev? He get, smoked, he get knocked out, spark out by Beterbiev, for sure, in my opinion. I ain't hate I'll just tell you what happened. Beterbiev knocked his ass, uh, spark out. That's for sure. He can't punch. Boatsy can't punch hard enough for, for Beterbiev. Yard can punch hard enough to have, to have a little bit of, of Beterbiev's respect. Boatsy can't. Yeah? Bivol, it'd be a political fight, but Bivol would win, ultimately. Buatzi ain't that cute. He ain't that slick to do anything with Bivol. That's what would have become apparent. So we can all sit here and say, just because Buatzi's been protected as such, or protected himself from losses, you can't hold that against Yard for taking risk. What are we doing here? Anyone can hang about, fight mid-level fights, and even then, who's, who's Buatzi for? Craig Richards, okay. And, and Aziz, mid-level guys. Fair play for doing that, but you ain't fought the Kovalevs or the Baturbiyevs. And you best believe if Yard had an offer for Bivol, he'd have been running with him as well. So yeah, on, on, on a pure... What it is basis, Yard is a 60-40 guy in this fight. However, what makes it more complicated is the fact that... Um, Buatzi has a mandatory for a belt. I'm not sure which one it is. It's one of the belts. So... That's what makes Buatzi valuable. He has a mandatory position. So you can get in line for a challenge at one of these cats. Bivol or Baturbiev. Whoever has the belt. Or maybe it gets stripped and becomes vacant. But maybe that's Yard's plan. Maybe Yard thinks, well, these belts might get split up. So what's the point me undercooking myself for Buatzi? It could end up being Yard versus um, Buatzi for a, a vacant belt. If they get split up or whatever. Because you've got... Um, Two fights with Baturbiev and Bivol. Sometimes the belt situation gets messy. It shouldn't do, really. Whoever wins between Baturbiev and Bivol should be given the four belts to, for the rematch. There's no reason. There's no challenger out there today that needs to that needs um, Baturbiev or Bivol needs to be stripped. Baturbiev and Bivol should be given the right to defend their unified belts. This stripping business is ridiculous. Meanwhile, Carrot Top Canelo has had mandatories for three, four years. How is Canelo still undisputed champion at 168? How is that possible? He ain't fought a mandatory in a minute. But yet they want to strip Crawford. Crawford becomes undisputed champion in devastating fashion. And they're trying to strip dude. Carrot Top has never lit up anyone of that calibre of Errol Spence. Like Terence Crawford did. He in there 11 rounds with Plant. Um, 7 rounds with Billy Joe and um, whoever you want. He in there smoking dude in, in, in expeditiously in a few rounds. So there's biases here. I've digressed. Listen. Yard on a pr uh, It's difficult, isn't it? I don't know what to say. I want to see the fight. Really, I shouldn't be talking about the money. I want to see Yard and Boatsy fight. 
But Hatman made a good point. He said that the thing is, if Yard loses to Boazzi, then he need a cash out fight kind of thing. Do you know what I'm saying? If Yard lose to Boazzi, what's he got? This is almost like a. It could be. A, listen, I think Yard smoked Boazzi. Unfortunately for Yard, kind of thing, because we we know my betting situation is not the best. People, it's not the most integral. You know, <laughs> it's one of the ones we know. We know if the YB thing he can win, he can get smoked. But now, I, I, Yard too hard. Yard too old school for Boazzi. Yeah, but what, I was wrong though. I thought that um, Dan Aziz was, would be too old school for Boazzi. So he didn't know. But he, he went life and death there. Yard can really punch. Um, Aziz is more of a break you down guy. Yard can bang though. Yeah? And he's slick as with it. The only thing with Yard is his gas tank does tend to fade. He's super sharp and super explosive in them first four rounds. And then he kind of... then big muscles get tired, unfortunately. Whereas Boazzi is more aerobic, he's more, he ain't gonna, he can knock your head off in one shot, but he can work for 12 rounds. So it's an intriguing fight. I back Yard though, that's just me, team lighty till the wheels fall off, do you understand what's there? Um, who should do what and whatever, again, ultimately I have to say that we have to see the fight, that's the bottom line here. Should Yard take 50% though? Oh, it's difficult, I don't know, part of me thinks um, Boazzi should, uh, should humble himself. But but Wax is in the position. Why play himself? But then again, listen, people. Let's be realistic here. We know Baturbiev can smoke Bivol ass. Yeah, and I I think there's a case here that Bwatsi versus um, and that's a year away, right? Right. Bwatsi versus Baturbiev. Oops. Is that even a bigger fight commercially than Yard and Bwatsi? I'm not sure it is. Baturbiev's got the whole Khabib thing going on, but it's not, it ain't got big Western clout. Not going to do big pay-per-view numbers. Yard versus Barazzi is a big numbers thing. Maybe I'm wrong here. Maybe Barazzi can hang around and get a vacant belt, but that's going to take a while. I'd have thought. Um, equally, where does Yard go, though? If Yard don't get this fight, where does he go? What's, he, what's Yard going to do? That's a good point. What's he going to do? So, yeah. Again, bottom line is, I think Yard got to take it. Yard should take the 50% and back. Listen, Yard's been backing himself. He backed himself against Kovalev. He backed himself against Baturbiev. You, you damn sure you should back yourself against Boazzi. He ain't all that. <laughs> That's my opinion, which don't mean a lick of nothing, because I'm always wrong. So, But in my opinion, Yard should say, I, I'm surprised they paid me 50. I'd have fought this dude for 20, because he's sweet. Yeah, this is, this is, this is some sparring work. This is some, this is some, Sunday, some Monday morning sparring work right here. We fix him to get 20% plenty enough for some sparring work with Boazzi. So 50, he should be laughing. Yeah, 100%. I, I'd have took this fight for 25%. Because this guy is 75% sweet. Yeah, when a man is 75% sweet, I'll take 25% of the cut. Because he's that sweet to me. Yeah, some things are just too sweet to give up. So that's my opinion. But anyway, each to their own and yards are... On his business, so he'll be what he'll be, but I hope the fight happens. Lemonade for smash the like button, subscribe, like off the bell 100%, no doubt.